Um, thanks for thanks for coming along. I've been sat for for the longest time trying to figure out um, how best to get my message out there. So for me, javelin content is a vehicle to delivering a message um, about content and um, video posts on my on my personal profile are great. Um, but it doesn't always allow for, you know, there's not a lot of interactivity on posts, especially when it's video. People consume the video and then they kind of go off and do other things. Um, so I wanted to kind of give it a bit of a 3D depth where people got the opportunity to ask questions and, and could see a little bit behind the scenes of, of my world um, as I go about doing what I do and how I use some of the tools that I have um, to, to I, I, I do the job of five people every day, right? And I do that through a combination of um, processes and workflows that I've built up over time, but I also do it with technology and using technology to my advantage without becoming that lazy salesperson who writes the connect request with chat GPT and hopes for the best. Um, I have tried that, by the way. It's horrendous. It is awful at doing that. Um, if you're doing it any other way than through programming APIs and I ain't a programmer, so I gave up on that idea. Um, I like the idea of it. I like the sentiment behind it, but it just wasn't for me. Um, especially when AI um, tried to tell somebody that um, as, a, as, as an AI entity, I can't actually comment on what you've just said. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't a good look, wasn't a good look. We gave up on that. Um, so why content? Um, why do I bang on about video content in particular, content in general? Um, why am I a big fan of uh, social media presence and delivering good quality content to your audience? A lot of people come to me and want leads. Everybody wants to grow their business, right? I'm in the same boat. We all want sales. The problem that most people have is that when they start out in business, they rely on sales from their network, their relationships, people that they know. Um, eventually that dries up. You tap the rest of your network out and eventually you come to a bit of a grind and stop um, and your growth plateaus or goes backwards. Um, and at that point, you then start to press all the other buttons that you should have probably been pressing three, four or five months ago. Results uh, include trying to use cold emails, cold, uh, cold calls, um, LinkedIn pitch messages, all those sorts of things. And let's be honest, they are not pleasant experiences to be on either side of the fence. We all sit here and grumble when somebody drops us a ridiculous LinkedIn request. Oh, I, hi, I see you breathe air. Um, I also breathe air. We should chat. I'd love to broaden my network. I've sent those connect requests once. I was there, right? Horrendous, awful. Um, but we still insist on sending them ourselves because it's important for me. I need turnover. I need revenue. Um, stop doing it. <laughs> it doesn't work. I know some people that can make it work, but it's never mass generated connect requests on scale. It's very, very targeted niche requests, and it's to a very niche targeted audience. There's a way and means of doing it, and that's not it. Cold emails the same. Like you've got to be very, very specific in what you say. You've got to know the challenges that you're trying to solve. You've got to be able to articulate it in three sentences. Again, you probably need an experienced salesperson to run that for you, um, or at least come up with the scripting that you're using for it. Same with cold calls. You know, I, I once had a conversation about how, how to do cold calls. I want you to get across more calls. And what you're asking someone to do is to be brave enough to call call people, interrupt their day, to offer them a service. Um, you've got to understand their role, understand their challenges, understand your USP, understand your technology or service well enough to articulate it quickly and succinctly. You've got to have a personality that meshes with that of your client. You've got to get, catch them at the right time of day, in between meetings, outside of family life, when they're not having a bad day. Then when they do give you the time of day, you've then got to narrate it quickly without tripping over your own tongue and launching into features and benefits. It's really, really tough to do. And I know people that have been in that business for 30 or 40 years and still hate doing it. So what's the answer? Brand positioning brand positioning, becoming a brand authority for your clients. That's that's what Javelin is all about. So how do we use posts on social media, blogs on websites, your content that you put out on your websites, so YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, 
LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. You can be across all of it. But how do you do that with good quality content that engages your clients or your ideal clients, I should say, your future clients? Um, how do you do that with good quality content at scale so that you can be consistent? Because a lot of people have the right idea. We launch a podcast and we do a podcast once a week for 30 minutes. Great. We release it. It goes in all the directories. We look at how many downloads it gets. Brilliant. Pat ourselves on the back. Job well done. Except you're still missing 95% of your audience that you could be reaching. So then they go, OK, well, let's turn that into four or five clips. Let's get an agency in. We'll turn that into four or five really good clips and we'll post that out and that job done. You're still missing 90 percent of your audience because the chances are you're posting it from your personal account or from a business account. You don't want to post the same thing twice. I've then got two or three posts per account. I'm still not posting about it regularly and consistently. And what I built was a framework and methodology to transform regular video content into lots of digital assets that you can then utilize across the week and across the month. Um, how do I do that? So it's a combination of um, being able to, to read English, which is always a great skill set, understand English, which is another great skill set, or whichever language you're working in, to be fair, um, and technology that sits behind that to make your life easy. Because if you try and do that with a standard movie editor, iMovie on a Mac or um, Windows Media Player, dare I say, or something similar, QuickTime, it is horrendous sitting watching that video through for 30 minutes, writing down timestamps, going back, clipping it. Oh, I didn't quite get it right. I missed the beginning of that word. Move it back a bit. Awful, awful process. I did that once. It taken me 20 hours a week to do two episodes. Horrible. Um, there are much, much better ways of doing things. Um, and why do I promote video content above everything else? Um, it's not just video content I promote, it's people-based video content because people sell personalities. People buy people. People trust people. People like people. They don't trust and like brands easily. That's a much bigger game, takes a lot more money. That's probably the wrong angle for any business that's doing less than 100 million a year, right? You, you're going to struggle with that. But people-based content, brilliant. A lot of senior leaders in businesses are really super passionate about what they do else they wouldn't have launched a business understand their industry else they wouldn't have a product or a service and know how to solve those problems but you put them in front of a keyboard and ask them to write a post on linkedin what comes out it looks like something chat gpt threw up two years ago awful stop doing it <laughs> and it's painful right like you sit there and you're looking at the keyboard going what the hell do i write today um so what today is all about, I've rambled on for a little bit, but what today is all about is helping you see under the hood a little bit of some of the tricks of the trade, some of the myths that are in the industry, and some of the tools that I use to fast forward and fast track what I do. Because I'm a firm believer that if you can take what I do, do it yourself, you are never my customer. You are never my client. You should be doing it yourself. Um, I don't want to work with people who can do it themselves or choose to do it themselves. Because in three months time, you're just going to go away from me and do it yourself anyway. So I'd rather we didn't start work together. I'd rather just help you get there and then we can move on. If you see some of the stuff that you see today and think, blimey, I don't want to ever do that. I love what he's doing and we want to chat. Feel free. Reach out to me. Absolutely no pressure. Um, so some myths, first of all, before I get into the tools, some myths. Right. Um, I see this all the time and it's frustrated the hell out of me for a long time. I'm getting on my sort box now. You can see I'm leaning forward. <laughs> um, influencers on LinkedIn and, and other social media platforms. Um, people who have millions of views on their YouTube channel. What's that all about? How do I get there? How do I get people to have 400 comments on my LinkedIn post? I want to be that guy or that girl. Unfortunately, the sad truth for the vast majority of influencers, and I'm not sugarcoating everyone here, um, the vast majority of influencers buy those comments and likes through a pod. And now a long time ago, it was very much easier to spot those pods because the comments would all be automated. And we still have those automated pods out there, but people are savvy to it now. The LinkedIn algorithms clicked onto that and, and they flag those accounts. So what you have now is more manual pods, which I have to say, I'm not completely against. Um, the way they work is you'll join a club, you'll download an app, 
um, you'll be in a community. You'll select who your audience you would like to reach is. And those people who are also using that pod, who are your audience, will choose their own audience. And it goes around in a big circle and you all help promote each other's content. I quite like that idea, I have to say. I don't think that should be against any terms of service because effectively all you're doing is creating a community where you can communicate with people who are like your client, who will be connected to people like your clients and help get better quality eyeballs on your content. But when you see somebody who posted 34 minutes ago with 400 comments and 225 likes, be aware that costs you. That's probably about £100 a month minimum to get those sorts of comments and likes, but it's doable. So if you want to go and do that, I don't recommend any of those services personally. Like I don't, I'm not affiliated and partnered with any of them. So if you want to go and find them, you can Google them. You can find them fairly easily. Go and have a look at them. You have to post through their platform, schedule out at a certain time of day, and a certain number of people will engage with it to kickstart the algorithm. Um, the other sort of things is, um, you know, as with anything, awards and things like that. Um, these things can be bought. So when you see people out there saying, you know, I'm on the on the top 100 list for copywriters for LinkedIn, quite often those lists, unless they're generated by LinkedIn themselves or some sort of other official body, again, they've paid to be on that list. Don't be fooled into thinking that means anything other than they're very serious about their craft. It's not to say that people who pay for those awards are bad people, because I'm not saying that at all, but there is that sat behind it all. So what am I getting at here is don't be phased when you see all these people with amazing views and comments and likes and things like vanity metrics. Don't play to it. When you're creating content, you need to create content for your audience that you want to reach, not your network that you know, the people that you like and all those sorts of things. You're not you're not creating content for them. You're creating content for the people that you want to reach because they may not be in your network yet, but they need to find you. And the only way they'll find you is through word of mouth when they see your content. When other people who are like them see your content start following you and word starts to get about people will come people will join people start to view the other thing i will say is don't worry if they don't comment don't worry if they don't like don't worry about how many views you get just keep doing it and stay consistent we all started somewhere i did i remember getting posts where i had three four likes two two to five views 10 views 20 views it took a long time to build that up without cheating, <laughs> without paying for likes and comments. Um, so tools that I use. Um, I use, I've probably got a bigger tech stack than than most software companies, right, in their sales team, their marketing team, because what I did was I, I cherry picked the best platforms that I liked when I was working um, at Mojo CX and, and, and learned those tools. And then when I left and had my own budget to do what I wanted, then I went and bought the rest of the tools that I knew could make a difference to my world. Um, so I, I haven't got time to go through all of those tools today, but the, the, the most important ones for me right now are there's a video editing tool called Descript. Now I'll put all these up in the chat in a bit and I'll put the links to them in there. Um, I'll give you my affiliate links. So, you know, you guys will probably get some discount off those as a, as a result of following them. But it's it's the it's the end result I want you to get to, which is to, to go and have a look at those platforms. If you're serious about video content, Descript has no competition in the marketplace. Um, they are invested in by OpenAI, so the ChatGPT company. They're invested in by those guys. They have things like um, automatic transcription built in. You can generate um, images within the platform through through chat, um, just like you can using Dali or uh, Midworld or whatever. Not quite the same quality, but similar. You can do all those sorts of things. I'll show you that in a moment. We've got Mem.ai. Mem is a note taking platform, not like Fireflies where it joins your meeting, records things and acts a bit creepy on the side. We're not actually talking to anyone, but it is uh, a place to store things that are important to you where you can then just go back and ask it a, a it's kind of like your own personal search engine, right? Like, what what is my VAT number? And it'll bring it up for you. It'll tell you where, where that mem's stored. You don't have to store things in categories and subfolders and remember which folder you put things in. Plop the mem in, add any keywords that are relevant to it. It'll do the indexing itself and it'll find you the right content. It's also got AI built into it. So it will read 
extract of information, extract a website, and whatever you've got stored in that platform, it can use the AI to look through that information, summarize it, and make decisions and give you give you the interesting stuff back. So it's kind of like having a trained AI there. Um, I don't use it for a lot of those. Like I don't ask it to create blogs and stuff like that. I prefer the the main interface for that. But that's it's a really cool system. And it's only, I think it's $10 per month, including the AI with unlimited use on the AI. So well worth it from my side of things. I've only just started using it probably about a month ago and I'm still learning new things that it can do and new ways that I can change my workflows to be more efficient with it. It's really good for just brain dumping stuff in as it comes in. Here's a PDF with some FAQs. Great, I'm not gonna read the FAQs, push it into MEM. Somewhere down the line, I can ask it the question. If it's in there, it'll tell me. I don't need to read the, the FAQ anymore. Um, chat GPT is the next tool. Hey, everybody knew I was going to go there. Um, absolutely. Chat GPT is brilliant. Um, it's also very dangerous for lazy people because you get trapped into sending very lazy messages or writing very lazy text. Um, if you're prepared to spend some time figuring out how to get the right tone of voice or get it to do the right thing that you want it to do, then it is very, very useful and is very efficient at creating um, either a finessed version of something you've already written or creating a stand starting point for you to then finesse on top. It's also really good at things like brainstorming and being a, 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 a sounding board for ideas and, and strategies. So it's really good for all those things. And then lastly, Social B, um, which I will also show you today, is um, my um, scheduling platform I use for social media. So if you're in a business and you want to be across more than one platform, I would heavily recommend that you use a platform like Social B. Um, there are a couple of others. There's, there's Buffer, which is great, but it's kind of queue based. Um, so you put things in, it pops them out in the order that you've put them in. You're constantly rearranging that queue to get the right feel. It's a bit, I'm not a fan. I, I tried it, I, I, I came away from it. You've got Hootsuite, which is great, but it's really expensive. So depends on what your budget is. Social B is not expensive and it ticks a lot of boxes. And you guessed it, it's got AI built into it for when you're writing posts. So yeah, there's all that side of things. All right, well, without further ado, I'm gonna dive into a couple of the platforms. Um, apologies, you guys have sat and listened to me rumbling on. Um, Incidentally, I am going to upload this onto YouTube. So if you've enjoyed it, um, I will pop it up on YouTube. Please, when when that happens, um, give us a subscribe on the YouTube channel. I'll pop it in the chat now. Um, YouTube.com slash at Javelin Content. Um, we've got a couple of podcasts on there. Um, this will just go up as a, as a new playlist, I think. I'll probably do a, one of these a month um, where we'll del delve into slightly different subjects or in more depth in certain areas. Um, but please feel free, give it a subscribe, get people that you know to go and have a watch of it. Um, I've no doubt that a lot of people would have liked to have been here right now. We had 20 something people who said they wanted to be here for this. It's dinner time. It's Thursday. It's nice outside. If I had the option, I'd probably be in the beer garden myself. But um, here we are. I'm, I'm helping you guys instead. How, how lucky are you? Um, <laughs> right. Let me share my screen. Uh, have I got all my... All my private stuff hidden. Let me have a look. Um, I think we're good. Um, right. Let's share screen then. Perfect. Right. So there's a lot to see here. Um, so let's focus on this part of the screen first of all. This is Descript. Um, apologies, you will be able to see some some language in here. Um, podcast that we have is uh, an adult podcast uh, so we do we do swear so it's not safe for work um but it, redline podcast is built for kind of sales and on so sales people and entrepreneurs people who want to accelerate what they're doing and step up to the next level i call host it with shane mahi who's, who's my business partner at ideas exchange um and this is how i would go about starting to create the episodes so i record in riverside by the way. Um, so any podcasts or video that you want to do, I heartily recommend Riverside, not least because it exports to Descript without you having to download any files. So it'll do all that for you. Um, you can download the files separately as well, just to keep a, a, a copy of them. 
Riverside is um, it's it's like Zoom but offline for for people with really high quality video content, separate audio files. It's really good for doing good editing with. You might not feel a need for it just now, but my advice is always to record in as high quality as you can with separate video and audio files as much as possible so that you can do things like if I talk over the top of my um, uh, core presenter, I can mute myself out so that you can just hear what he's saying. You don't just get that garbled chunk of talk, which is fine when you're part of the conversation, but when you're listening back on audio only, you don't want to hear that. Um, as you can see, um, you've got both video on one side and text on the other side. Let me make this a bit wider. Um, good grief, I hate looking at myself. Something else for everyone, right? Like I've been doing podcasts, live events, webinars for three years, three and a half years now. I still hate seeing myself, still hate listening to the sound of my voice when I'm editing. That never goes away. Sorry, guys, but like that's just how it is. Um, so if anybody is going to create video content for themselves, just need to suck it up and get on with it, princess. Um, it is it's awful. I'm a Geordie Foghorn and I'm not even a Geordie. I just tag myself as that because nobody knows what a Macam is. Um, <laughs> so um, what does it do? You input the, the video into this and it automatically transcribes down all the words that is said in that instance, literally everything. Um, and we all we've all watched the subtitles on LinkedIn videos and how they go badly wrong and they're awful is use the same technology, right? Is but it does it live. Um, Descript can do that live as well. If you record in the interface and you can record in Descript directly, um, it can be a little bit buggy. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would heartily recommend Riverside first, but you can do it in Descript if you want to save yourself some money. Um, but nobody wants to release things with auto captions because they're awful. Um, it's like watching BBC uh, closed caption subtitles. It's terrible. Um, and there are some absolute belters out there for, for things that are mistranscribed. And I've seen some even from me. Um, <laughs> I think back to some of the um, AI would agree ones that I did with Mojo CX and I had uh, Jimmy, who's, who was our CEO. Um, he's a very nasal speaking Mancunian who talks very fast at some of the stuff that it came out with for him that he claimed he'd said was just outrageous and offensive. Um, so always worth correcting these transcripts, but this is, makes it really easy and watch this. So on this transcript on the left hand side, you can see underlined in blue, there's lots of bits and pieces here. Some of it is filler words, right? Doesn't actually mean anything. It's just me talking, play it back. Um, if, if, you, if you still- Right, even I, my brain fluffs up quite a lot. So like I'll say things like that. Um, that's not what you want to hear when you're on a podcast, you want to get rid of it. First of all, you've got this little button up here that lets you search for filler words. She's now highlighted all of them. There's 168 in this transcript alone. And you can either delete the video and audio that goes with it. So it just skips over that bit and you don't see or hear it at all. If you're doing longer form content, 20, 30 minutes, it just looks really skittish and jumpy and it's it's not good. What you can also do is just remove it from the transcript. I don't care about those words. Um, or it's repeat words, filler words, all those things. Apply, gone, bye-bye. How much better does that look? Now we're down to pretty much the, the content that we wanna go with. Um, aside from that, you can see here, 5.2 seconds. You might just be able to make that out. I'm on dark screen, so you might just be able to make that out. Let me see if I can make this a bit bigger for you. There we go. Um, so 5.2 seconds means there's a gap at the end of what I'd said before I said the next thing. And the reason for that is we were just starting to record here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that bit because didn't need it to be there. Delete the text, it deletes the video, it deletes the audio with it. If I wanted to pick this piece of text up here and the audio and video that goes with it and move it down here. Let me just do that now. Oh, of course, it's going to it's going to give me an error when I'm doing that. The script, if you're watching this, get a grip. <laughs> not gonna let me do it 
uh yeah we sometimes have these problems with the um with the video file there's nothing nothing's infallible right um all right let's get past that but literally i can copy that paste it down here generally it'll work um welcome to the hazards of live demos right this is why I, this is why i'm pleased to step away from demo and products um but you can also just move words on here you can slip words so if i wanted to cut away um this bit noise here right what's just me laughing, right? Oh, let's get rid of it. Watch oh, it again. It's got a skip. Right. Then there's a bit of a skip. There's a bit of a jump. So what I can do is I can crossfade across the two sections. It's got a speed beside. Not everyone. It's got. Makes it nice and smooth. So it stops it stops that happening. I'm going to put that back the way it was because I'm not doing the editing just now. I just want to show you some of the capabilities of Descript. Um, what's also brilliant about Descript is um it creates um outputs at scale so if i go to now then um yeah so let's just show you here so if i want first of all you can publish live to the web so i can send somebody a link to this and they can view this as is what i can also um export by line breaks or by markers so what's uh, obviously a line break is what it is so what I tend to do is I'll take the bits that I really like for quotes. I'll color them so I know which ones I've used and then I'll duplicate it into a new composition. It's not going to let me do it because because of the aforementioned problem. But that will effectively create a, a separate file that just has all the clips that I want to then turn into 30 second to minute and a half reels. What can then duplicate that entire composition that has all those clips in. And output it in lots of different formats and apply different templates and themes to it. So if you look up here, I've got some templates in here. So let's have a look. Um, Javelin Journeys, that's in mine. So you can see here, there's lots of finger shaking, very sort of emotive. Um, all the different styles that you want to produce. And, and I like these type posts as well. So everybody goes for video posts, which is great. But now and again, you just want to stop people scrolling. So I use these visualizers. Um, where it's just karaoke style words and and the and the, the the bit that goes across the bottom. So if I apply this to this, you'll see it turns it into that. We don't have the video anymore. We've just got this. Um, reset the scene. I've got yeah. So interestingly, in here I've only got um, me showing up in here as the video. Um, I don't know where that is. I'm going to have to have words with descript in the background. Um, there are. Uh, <laughs> working hard on improving it um, it is a work in progress hands on heart um, it does have some bugs it does have some issues um, I think it's the most user friendly video editing tool I've ever seen it saves me a ton of time and it's great for outputting stuff at pace um, so I'd 100% recommend this and it's only $30 a month right it's not expensive that's the pro version um, so I'd, I'd heartily recommend that for anyone who wants to do that. Um, have a play about with it. There's a free version. Have a play about with it. See what you can come up with. Um, there's lots and lots of stuff you can do with it. There's all sorts of templates in here. If I look down to, um, you know, they've got their own inbuilt intros and stuff that you can take and make your own. You've got um, slides in here if you want to do slides for, for doing presentations with it. And you can write, this is the really cool part of it, you can write your own text in here and it'll voice over in either a pre-given sort of standard AI voice, which I will say they are pretty good, um, or you can have it analyse a chunk of your own text and it will be able to overdub in your own voice. So you could do like a, you know, like a product promo video with you talking over the top of it. Why would you do that? Simple, because if you want to update it, rather than have to re-record the whole thing with you doing a demo on the screen or whatever you're trying to do, you can just update the words on the screen and it'll re-download them and you can use it from there. I wouldn't recommend it for anything longer than a couple of minutes because it can be quite obvious that you're using um, AI to do it and that puts a lot of people off. But it's really good for things like I use it for intros and outros for the podcast. Um, it's just it's it's a nice punchy American voice I use. Hey, this is Redline podcast. I didn't have to pay for a voiceover artist to do it. I didn't have to sit there and try and record it 20 times to get it right. I plug the text in, change the text several times to get it right and output the content. And it sounds I think it sounds really professional um, when you especially when you're going on a shoestring, right? Like if you want to do things on a budget, that's the way forward.
Uh, you can do all these sorts of things. You know, if you've got a, a template here, you you can. Oh God, I look like I've been smashed. Um, there's all sorts of stuff in there, different types of titles and things like that that you can have coming over. You can do all the standard stuff like cutting scenes and, and being really fancy with things crossfading in. You've got studio sound up here, which allows you to um, which allows you to add um, a real good quality um filter over the top of everything that's been said so that both speakers are at a similar volume you cut out background noise it gets rid of bits of echo if there's any echo in there and there's also all the other stuff that you'd expect like dynamics and equalizers and um effects and you can you can green screen yourself so if you record a video like this you can just green screen the background and then put yourself somewhere else if you want to um you can add animations um that it is a really comprehensive tool. It can be as complex or as simple as you make it. I use it really simply. Um, if you are going to use it, my advice would be spend some time setting up your templates. Um, templates are the key to really saving time. I tried to do all this manually at one point and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to ever make a living out of this. Templates are the way you save time because once you've set things up the way you want them, you just click on the button and it'll format it how you had it set up before. Um, and create a new project it's all there ready for you ready to go just create the number of duplicates you want apply the template to each file so what i tend to do is we'll create one 30 minute podcast for a client i'll take that edit the main video here i'll copy it and do one copy for audio where i don't have an intro i'll then do another copy where we have their intro file added on and recorded into the beginning of the conversation i'll create a composition that's got all their clips in where I want to export them out by line break or by marker, depending on depending on how it is. Um, and then um, I'll create copies of that composition in all the different formats I want to use. So two different color schemes for their brand and then portrait, square and landscape are all the formats you need to output across all social channels. There is not a social channel that isn't covered by that. Um, export those. You've got content for days, for weeks. It's really worth getting to use it. Um, it takes some time to learn and get comfortable with it. It can feel, I remember it being quite clunky to figure out when I was, there's a lot of good YouTube videos out there to show you how to use it though. All right, that's the script. Again, I'm gonna put up the, um, tell you what, let me pop into the chat two seconds and I will pop in my affiliate links for you for all the tools that you're about to see. Um, Perfect. Um, again, like guys, this is a live interactive session. If you've got any questions as we're going, feel free to shout up. We've got 12 minutes left. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dive into some of the other stuff, not in as much detail as Descript, because Descript is by far the most um, the most uh, useful tool that I have. Um, let me just go back to the main screen now. So um, we've got, first of all, on this side, we've got ChatGPT. I'm going to come back to that last. ChatGPT, you can see here, my screen will look very different to however yours looks because I have the extension called, where is it at? Superpower. Superpower Chat GPT. Absolutely worth downloading that. And what it does is it allows you to take your Chat GPT interface, create folders, um, store your chats into the folders nice and easily. It syncs across all your devices. And what I really like about it is it allows me to take a transcript and paste it in somewhere else. It paste it into your chat GPT, it'll load it in chunks. So a long 30 minute transcript, chat GPT doesn't like anything over a certain number of tokens, it'll reject it. With the superpower extension on the end of it, it will upload it in chunks so that it's got the full document. Then you can ask it a question about the entire transcript, which is brilliant. And I'll show you some examples from that in a second. Mem.ai. So I mentioned Mem earlier. Um, Mem is a brilliant tool for productivity. I brain dump all of my stuff in here. You can connect your email and your calendar to it, and it'll read your emails for you and answer questions based on your email. It'll export your contacts from your emails so you can attach them to certain Mems. Um, if you want to make notes about things, you can make your Mems um, public and share them with people or share them within your team. Um, if I want to have a look at, for example, our Redline podcast, I've got all my links for Redline podcast in here, um, but I can just as easily ask it for any of these in the chat. So let me let me go. Um, well, there you go. There's some good examples. Um, I tried to find my social B affiliate link and realized I didn't have one. 
but it told me that it had ones for Riverside, the script and Buzzsprout. Brilliant, very helpful. I can turn that into a mem of its own if I want. Um, I want to ask, um, what's Javelin's VAT number? It'll go away, find that for me, and it'll come back with the answer. But rather than me having to go and search for things and remember where I stored things. Brilliant. Very helpful. Thanks, man. Um, so I use that all the time. Um, it's really, really powerful. Um, you can incidentally, you can WhatsApp it information, you can email it information, and it'll store all that um, in your flaws. You can collect Twitter, you can you can do loads and loads of cool stuff. You can schedule memes, you can do templates with it. Um, you can connect it to your CRM, um, you can do all sorts. And it keeps you up to date with your meetings that you've got coming up as well. Looking forward to seeing Joel there. Right, social B. Right, let's switch to my workspace. You're all going to have an absolute fit here. So these are all the social channels I administer just for Javelin and Redline and me. Um, it's fun. As you can imagine, I can't do all that by hand. So I focus primarily on LinkedIn. Um, I write the content for LinkedIn, especially for my channel. I will write that myself. Um, but I have automations in here that help extract things from YouTube, for example. When you, a new YouTube reel or clip or a YouTube short goes up, it'll automatically import into, say, TikTok or Twitter or, or whatever um, and put that out across there. I don't monitor those channels, if I'm fair. It's just a, for the sake of having a presence there. But it is really good. And I do get some actually some good responses from, from doing those sorts of things. So how does social B work? Um, you create for all of the things that you want to post about. You can see here I've got some client videos where I want to share some of the work that I've done with my clients and who they are. Um, we've got announcements. So if I've got a new podcast episodes dropped, something will go in there. Um, and again, I can, through using a cool feature called RSS, I can take my podcast feed and whenever a new episode drops, that RSS feed automatically creates a post in Javelin announcements and posts it out for the next available slot. Really powerful tool. You can do a lot with it without having lots of people to, to work on things. Um, testimonials. And the beauty about testimonials is, um, as an example, you can see here your requeue is activated. So this is the sort of stuff that's not going to change over time. Um, we write it once. And then and then it goes out multiple times so it can requeue that we can set this up as evergreen content and every time it gets to the back of the queue it resets the queue goes back to square one and it puts that out across facebook twitter and linkedin all at the same time let's have a look at it now i haven't tweaked these too much but you can see here i've got a slightly different call to action attached to each one so i haven't particularly written a post to go with that i just want to post out that testimonial I have this call to action on the bottom because I've added um, there's, there's a selection. You can't see it at the moment because it's already done, but there's a selection to customize it per profile. And you can see there my personal LinkedIn is different to my business LinkedIn and my Facebook one. Again, is different to either of my LinkedIn's. And if you want to add a variation, you can do another version of that same thing with different wording again. So if I'll, I'll click it now, I'll remove it afterwards. So I can now go in and edit. You'll see we're now doubled up on all the posts. And I can now go in and change these ones to say something slightly different with the same graphics and queue that up as well. I'm not going to. I don't like doing that, if I'm fair. Um, so it's really powerful for creating a lot of content. There is a danger. You end up getting yourself lost in all of this, by the way. So bear in mind the power of it, but do it step by step build it up step by step. If I want to import videos in bulk, which is obviously what I'm talking about doing from the script here, I can just click on add photos or videos and upload up to 100 clips all at the same time. Tell it which profiles I want those clips to be uploaded for. I can tell it which category I want it to be in, whether it goes at the top or the bottom of the queue. And if I want to append text to every single one of those, so my hashtags, for example, my call to action, I can put that in there and I can have it as draft if I want to go back and add individual posts or I can have it as approved and it'll just go out live on the next session. You set up your schedules. Please don't have a heart attack. Um, it's not as complex as it looks. Let's keep it simple. Let's have a look at my my LinkedIn profile. So you can see here Javelin Journeys, which is my own personal podcast. 
25 past nine on Mondays, it posts something about that. Then it'll post something random from any of the categories I've selected as being suitable for random. Educational posts on a Wednesday, client videos on a Thursday, and any javelin journeys is the second post, et cetera, et cetera. Red line, you get the feel for it. There's a, there's a, so it allows me to structure my content across the week based on the content categories I've created and be in control of how and how much is going out on any one profile or all of them together. If I just want to have a look at where random categories are going out, you know, you can you can have a look and see all of them. The only thing I would say is like what is missing is being able to view all of these at the same time for a particular category. Um, but you can see there you, and you can go to a calendar view as well if you want to see how that plays out across your day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's lots and lots of cool stuff you can do with it. Incidentally, I did mention earlier, when you're writing your post, you do have the AI bot. Uh, it will take your video and give you captions for it. It will generate images for you. Um, you can get it to write stuff for you, and it has all sorts of uh, it has all sorts of different categories for stuff. Um, it'll help you come up with stuff. It'll inspire you, give you ideas. Never, ever, ever, rule number one, never, ever, ever, just post automated content. Read it first, make sure it matches, tailor it to you, but use it as a jumping off point. And then very, very quickly, I just want to conscious we've got a few more minutes left. Um, got a quarter of an hour. I want to jump into chat GPT. Um, it gets a bad reputation, <laughs> um, and rightly so, because people abuse it, as with any tool that is really powerful. People see the way to... Um, make millions and then they do it really badly. Um, what I use it for is lots of different things. Um, let's have a look at Redline, for example. Right, so let me scroll up a bit. I'll show you what I mean. So I copied a transcript, um, which was quite a long transcript, it was 30 minutes long, and I pasted it into here. Control C from Descript, Control V into ChatGPT. With the Superhuman plugin, it automatically adds this bit at the beginning. And what that does is it says, hey, ChatGPT, I'm about to load you a document. I'm going to give you it in four chunks. This is chunk one. Don't acknowledge anything other than the fact that you've received the chunk and let's process it. So it does that. There's chunk one. Um, let me get to the end of chunk one so you can see the response. Right, chunk one, done. Don't reply with anything else. OK, chunk one of four, done. Then it automatically feeds it the second one. I don't even see this, by the way. It just goes in really quickly. It then feeds in two, three, and four. Right, great. So this was an interview I did with Dominic Rapaski from Metagore. And I wanted it to generate a YouTube synopsis. So when I post the video on YouTube, um, it asks for a description of the video. I've got all the clips and reels and stuff, and I want to tell people about what happened in the podcast itself. Um, this is the way to do it. Um, now, people play about with ChatGPT. What they don't do is get specific enough, and that's why they get bad outputs. The more specific you can be, the better you get with it. And what I do is I store my prompts in MEM, and I try tailor them and update them in MEM. So I start with a really simple prompt and I think, right, what's wrong with this output? And I'll ask it to retry, but add something. And I'll retry and add something else and retry and add something else. And eventually I get something that I look at it and I think, do you know what? That is pretty close to what I want it to be. So then I make sure that that's the prompt that I store in MEM, copy and paste it back in here when I want to. You can instantly um, view your prompt history in here um, and you can create community prompts so stuff that other people can use and take to do, to do their own thing with um, so this is what it put out so revolutionizing business relationships in insightful chat with dominic rapatsky of metago join us blah 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 and i really like this why right? i think this is for a youtube description that is probably not going to be read by many people but is necessary to have both for seo purposes and for completeness and professionalism it's there it does the job watch this rewrite the above in the 
style of who we're going to go with. Um, Steve Jobs. Do not mention Steve Jobs because he has a habit of saying it is Steve Jobs or as Steve Jobs would say, you don't want it to do that. You just want to replicate someone's style. Here we go. Takes a couple of seconds. We'll point out this is ChatGPT4, which is the, by far the better version for this sort of work. 3.5 is great for um, pulling out topics and headlines and things like that. GPT4 is much better for this sort of thing. And it transforms the content. Um, uses words like gold mine of wisdom. I, I would never use that, and it didn't use that in the previous one. It will literally take any well-known celebrity. So one of the things that you can do is question this one. So my clients are predominantly SaaS entrepreneurs. And I asked it, act as a world-class marketing expert, that is a genius piece of prompt in there, act as someone or something that you want it to be. Identify the characteristics, demographics, and firmographics of my ideal client. Here's who they are. Here's what I know about them. I would like you to know as I'd like to know as much data as possible about them, and I'd like you to compare them to three celebrities' personalities who they closely match. So it's come up not only with the client profiles for tech tech entrepreneur Ted, but it's also compared him with three celebrities who I can then use to mimic their voice when I talk. Reed Hoffman, I used the other day for a couple of posts, and it was perfect. It was really, really good. Um, so think about those sorts of strategies when you're creating chat GPT prompts. That's the difference between somebody who uses chat GPT and somebody who's just being lazy. It's an art form. I will I will kid you not. I enjoy I really enjoy tweaking it and playing about with it. But that's a sort of level that you need to go to to be that specific that it comes out with the stuff that you want. What I will say is in these chats, you can go for quite some distance. Um, prompting it and prompting it, prompting it. Eventually, it will start to forget what you did at the beginning because it has a limited memory. Um, they're increasing that over time, so you'll get access to versions that have much better memory and more recall and stuff. But it is necessary sometimes to re-prompt it further down the line to say, forget everything above, let's start again. Here's my original prompt. So just keep an eye out to make sure it's not deviating from what you asked it too much. Another thing I do with it, is three posts from one. So I will ask it um, to take a copy of, let me let me scroll up, sorry. Um, so it's quite a long prompt, right? You can imagine this has taken me some time to build up. I wanna give it a prompt, a post that I've written for LinkedIn and ask it to then put its own spin over it for a LinkedIn business account, a Facebook business account, and another version of my own personal version. So I can look and see whether what the, what it writes is better than what I wrote. And for each one, um, we we specify things like, is it I or we? Because obviously in a business tone, you're going to be talking in the, um, in the, in the oh, I can't even, I don't know the proper marketing terms, second person plural, something like that. Um, this is an interesting one, Put, outputting it is Andy Homozi, the, the famous entrepreneur, it's great. Um, Reid Hoffman down here, Stephen King, that's, Produces some really interesting prompts, um, whether it's in the third person, second person, whether it's active tone or not. My takeaway from ChatGPT, guys, by the way, is it's really powerful. Build up your use cases one at a time. This is accumulation of the last six months worth of my work. So it's a lot to take in. Take what tips you can from it and experiment in your own way. But what it does is it puts out every time I created some base content. So that's a post that I wrote. Then it puts out a business account post, it puts out a Facebook account post, and it puts out a personal post. Copy and paste into Social B, jobs are good in. You've got three posts from one, you've written it all technically. LinkedIn goes over the, um, AI goes over the top of it. Always remember to read through your post though. Sometimes it hallucinates, sometimes it doesn't make sense, and sometimes it spouts crap. So keep an eye on it. It's like a, it's like a bit of a naughty child sometimes, but it, it does work. Another thing that it's really good for um, is this. So I create the Redline blogs and newsletters. It's a lot of work for one person to do. I do a lot of stuff. And I've prompted it to the point now where it takes the transcript. There we go. One to five chunks. Oops. Chunk five done. Right. 
act as an experienced social media expert, analyze the above document and identify 20 key topics that would be suitable to create a newsletter and blog content about. Give me a catchy title, put them in a list, not bullet points or numbers, and don't write anything else other than the topics. It did that. And I was like, that's great, but now I'm going to have to delete all those quote marks. And just ask ChatGPT to do it. Retry and remove the quote marks. Brilliant. That's what I wanted. Now, now's the clever part. Here's the long prompt. Whoa, it's a monster one. Again, it's trial and error. There's lots of stuff to it. Um, and it's it, I can I could give you this, right? But you'd have to rewrite the way you want to write it anyway. It's, it's all very personal to you and what you want to do. There's lots of advice out there if you go and look for it in terms of the sorts of things you can do. Um, 800 to 1,000 words, one at a time, output them one at a time, ask me if I'm happy with them in between. Here's all the bits and pieces. And then I'll send you the next post afterwards. What I actually start to do it was um, ask it what keywords will be useful at the end as well. So I now can tag those as I create the, the blog posts on the website. So I know what tags are included in with the content that's in there. Again, copy, paste, drop. One more really cool thing to show you is I'll go right to the bottom. When you go to copy, you can now copy in HTML or Markdown language. So if you're creating uh, content for a blog, you copy that in HTML and you can put it into your website blog in the in the source code and it will format it exactly as it is there. Because that's the other thing I find with ChatGPT is you've got to spend some time then reformatting and making things bold. Without wanting to cover more than I already have, that kind of brings us to the end of the line for a day. Um, I hope that's been useful for everyone. Um, I just want to give you a bit of a, a view under the hood of the sorts of things that go on and the level of technology that's sat behind things. Um, all of those things put together, what I'm, I'd imagine if I'm looking from your side of this, look really daunting right now. Um, don't let it feel daunting. Um, start with one thing at a time. What I'm showing you is what I've built over the last three years. You, you won't replicate that quickly, but one tool at a time, you can use that to get ahead of the crowd and really build some really good content. Um, before I before we wrap up the session, has anybody anybody got any um, questions that you'd like to ask? Is there anything you'd like to cover next time? You know, if we if we do another one in a month, has it been worth it? Have you enjoyed it? Has it been useful? Was it too much? Um, you know, and if you're not comfortable putting it in the chat in here, not everybody is. Don't worry about it. Feel free to um, drop me a line on LinkedIn or WhatsApp. Pretty much everybody has my numbers and my details are freely available on my LinkedIn profile. Um, obviously, you would have found my LinkedIn profile first to get to the event, I think. So um, I am on there. Um, but yeah, I hope it's been useful for people. I didn't want to brain dump too much. Um, good. Thanks, Ash. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, if anybody's got any questions, anything you want to follow up on, please do feel free. Drop me a line. I do this stuff because I want to help people. It's not about generating business. It's about helping people. And the more people I can help, the better I sleep at night. Um, I've got a lot of uh, horrendous things to make up for, probably. <laughs> I spent 15 years in retail. I'm bound to have done some things that uh, count against me in the end, right? Um, I will be putting this up on YouTube. Please give it a subscribe. Have a look at the other podcasts when you're on there. See if they're interesting. Javelin Journeys will probably give you a bit more feel for why I sat Javelin up in the first place. This is going to be probably a, a monthly thing that I'm going to do now and again, but it's for you guys, right? Um, <laughs> thanks, Paul. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go. I, I know some real chat GPT experts, right? I am, believe me, I'm an amateur. Um, I've known some prompt engineers that can earn like half a million a year. It's insane. The, the level that you can go to with chat GPT. Um, I'm just trying to show you how to get past the lazy stage and, and what the real power of it behind is. But yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, cool. Hopefully I'll see you again in a month. Feel free to share the uh, episode on YouTube when it comes up and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.